Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tuam, and today I'm going to talk with Tony McClure, also known as Tony Kane. She's a pro singer, model, actress, producer, so many titles. That's why we will have so many things to talk about. Yes, there she is. Uh, let me send the request. I don't know why I don't have her here. Yes, there she is. The request. So I'm waiting for her to accept the request. Uh, hey, Tony. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. What about you? I'm very good. It's very yeah. really nice to see you finally. So how yeah. is everything there? You're in LA, right? Yeah, I'm in Los Angeles. Everything is good, you know. Uh, the COVID thing, it's a little bit better right now. So that's good. It's, things are starting to open up a little bit, thankfully. In our area, the restaurants were closed. Well, they weren't closed. They were open, but only for takeout. And it makes life a little boring. You can't go anywhere. But like, I was eating all my lunches in my car. <laughs> I see. <laughs> where, where, yeah. where are you right now? I'm in Cyprus. And unfortunately, we have the same situation. It's lockdown. And the vaccination process is going so slow. Yeah, yeah. I uh I had COVID back in uh around Thanksgiving, so I'm hoping that my uh, antibodies keep lasting for a while. <laughs> yeah, I hope and I was very sad when I heard it and you said also some of your relatives uh, got infected by COVID. Uh well no, my daughter got COVID and um then I got it with her. We think actually that she got it on the plane, believe it or not. Um it was kind of weird. She flew in from Denver on a Friday and I saw her briefly on Friday and then I saw her the next day in the afternoon. And then by Monday or Sunday, late Sunday, she had some minor symptoms. And then I got them the very, I was like one day after her. And luckily for us, we were pretty mild. We only had um, sore throat, uh, low grade fever. And um, I lost my sense of smell completely and it was rather comical. Would you like to hear about it? Oh. <laughs> I couldn't smell anything. Nothing stinky, nothing. I was thinking, <laughs> like, oh my god! If I w once I got better, like I could go back out into the world and public and work or whatever, I I would tell my friends, I go, you know, I, I'm fine. I'm not contagious anymore, but I can't smell. So you're gonna have to let me know if I'm stinky. <laughs> <laughs> I would not know. <laughs> I but see. So that I, I I have friends that have passed away. So um, or. Not super close friends, knock on wood, but friends and friends of friends and things like that. How about you? Uh, actually, I, I think I actually got it last year, but I'm not sure because I was uh, in quarantine and I didn't check anywhere. I didn't give any tests, but it was very suspicious. And I, I was at the beginning of the process of COVID. So that time it was not known, for example, what are the symptoms? Right. Did you have loss of sense of smell or anything like that? No, I didn't have that one, by the way. So that's why I'm not but, sure that it was. Not, or... not, I don't think everybody gets that. And you want to know something really funny. You know how like you get a cold and you, you can't breathe out of your sinuses anyways. So a lot of times you could lose your sense of smell. For me and my daughter, we could breathe. Our, our sinuses hurt and they were stuffed up for sure. But we could breathe out of our nose. But I couldn't smell anything. It was like, oh, it's really strange. <laughs> Really super strong candle. I don't even know if I have one here. You know, like one of those really scented ones. I'd smell it and be like, like nothing. <laughs> so weird. But anyways. And some of your fans are mentioning uh, that uh, they love to hear your voice again as a singer. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay, okay. I keep saying that I'm going to, um, well, I, I, if you go to Sound uh, SoundCloud, I can't talk this morning, saying, let alone saying, um, there's a lot of my music that's on there that some of it's unreleased that I've been sharing. But I have a girlfriend of mine. Her name is Nisha Katron. And she and I actually used to be in a band together many years ago. It, um, we didn't have a record deal on that album, but it was called Under Wraps. And it was a group of all female uh, band members, bass player, drummer, everybody. Um, to make a long story short, she, is, she and I have maintained friendship this whole time. And she's been doing a lot of recording and things like that. And we just decided that we're going to record something very soon. And I will release something with her very soon. The two of us will sing together. So oh, I, that I, would be wonderful. I, yeah, because she she's um, staying current and she has access to the studios and the this and the other. And I kind of fell out of the loop, even though I still can sing. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I, I, I really am. So it's weird because 
you know, I, I mean, I'm 29, right? Uh, but <laughs> in my mind, right? But it's kind you of look of also. <laughs> you don't. You don't age. <laughs> it's kind of a weird time for me because. I hadn't been acting a whole lot. I've just been mostly producing and directing, which I'm still doing and I'm really enjoying. And if people follow me, I'm also a professional horse trainer. I know I'm a, I'm a little bit cuckoo, but, um, but <laughs> I just decide if I want to do something, I just do it. I just have to, but horses have been something I've been doing all my life. So that's a whole nother story. But what I was going to say is people have been requesting on a regular basis, you know, like, come on, let's have you sing again, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, all right, maybe I will, you know? And then people are saying, are you going to do any acting or, or anything like that? And I just did a cameo uh, on a movie called Bigfoot or Bust. <laughs> it's a, it's a, a funny slapstick over the top comedy starring, um, I just have like a nice cameo, good little part in it. Um, uh, like Becky LeBeau, Rocky DeMarco, all of the, you know, kind of rather sexy type actresses from the late 90s, early 2000s. And the the, the executive producer, director, Jim Wynorski, asked me if I would do a part in it about a month ago or so, maybe more than that. I think he asked me like two months ago. And, um, it you know, I've, I've, I've been in good shape, you know, most of the time anyways, because of horses and I, I I'm vain, what can I say? I want to stay in good shape. But over the last six to eight weeks, I worked a little bit harder. And I did post a picture, uh, a promo picture that I just received from Jim Winorski. And that's current. We just shot that like, um, gosh, two weeks ago or something like that. And um, then I was talking to, I hope he doesn't get mad at me, but a, a good friend of mine, uh, John the Dragon Wilson, who I did a movie with years ago called uh, Inferno. It actually has a couple different names that we went by. Uh, Cobra Mission, the, the, you know, depending on what, where they release the, the movie. And uh, we're talking about me, you know, maybe doing a movie with him because I do do martial arts and I just have to get my flexibility back. <laughs> that would be great. And uh, there are so many things that you have tried and it's very hard to pick on someone, something and just uh, ask about it. But uh, which one are you passionate about these days? Is it uh, producing? Um, I would say the two things that I'm absolutely most passionate about, um, to be totally honest with you, is probably producing, directing, and I really love horse training. That's like my sport, my passion. I really enjoy it. And I have some, I have a very small group of, of people that I, I train six horses professionally. That's, you know, that's a lot actually, but you know, it's not like an army of horses. And um, I really enjoy doing it. It keeps me fit. It's something that I've loved my whole, my whole life. I've been it's not like I, you know, was this model, actress, you know, singer, blah, 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 that just decided I wanted to, you know, ride horses. No, I grew up around horses. It's been something that I've been doing my whole life. My father was a real cowboy. He was, for those that don't know, he was on The Virginian. He played Trampus on the series The Virginian way back when. And he was been in lots of different movies. Oh, I'm sure here somewhere. Um, oh, um, ah, hi, hold on one second. <laughs> it's okay. So guys, the comments are open, so you can also give comments and if you have any questions. Can you yeah, see it? here's that, uh, that, that. But anyway, so well, well, let me just finish that thought real quick. So I really love my horses, but I'm working on a couple scripts as a producer, writer, director. And it re I really, um, we're trying to finalize um, funding for that. And I'm really excited about one particular project called uh, Working Title Rescue Me. Um, and then also, I'm really excited about a, another film project that I'm working with um, a novelist by the name of uh, Deanna Cox or Dee Dee Cox. But, uh, okay, questions. And by the way, how, what is your strategy to get that fine funding? Because it's very challenging for producers. Uh, yes, it is. Um, hmm. Okay. So for Rescue Me, you could probably look it up on IMDb on my thing. You can see that I'm working on it. I'm working with two very uh, experienced ex executive producers. One is Richard Gabai. He's wonderful. You can check him out on IMDb. Sorry, there's something coming up on my screen. Don't want that there. And um, he and I are friends. We work together. He was a director. He directed me in a couple films way back when, and we've been friends for a really long time. So he is a Emmy award-winning uh, producer. He, um, so he's attached to the film and he's been helping guide me. You know, I've produced lots of different things, but you know, 
I, I have a pretty full name feature before as well, but this particular one that I'm talking about, I, I want to direct. And I've directed a ton of things and I've produced a ton of things, but I have not directed an entire full name feature. I've directed a lot of shorts. I've won awards for that. So they're attached. And then also Grant Kramer, another really wonderful executive producer is attached. And what we're doing right now is we're seeking funding for um, attachments. What that means is, um, we're going to, we're hiring, I've been talking to a casting director. We're, we're going to talk to a couple different casting directors. We're going to ca hire a casting director and we're going to try to secure one of our star names. And then it's sort of a process. Once you get that going, then you can potentially get the rest of your funding because you it's, this is a business, you know, it's, it's a good script. Everybody really likes it, but you have to make it make sense, you know, and it's a little bit tough right now with what's going on with COVID because, you know, the, Industry is slowed down unless it's a major motion picture that's been on, on in the pipeline for a long time, if that answers your question. Yeah, and you also produce uh, something related to Betty White, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yes. It was a documentary, right? Uh, I, uh, a produ associate producer and a director and editor for uh, a, a documentary for Fox News television locally called and it's you can see it anywhere now um love betty white and we won a national journalism award for that and i give carlos amesqua he's a uh, television news anchor um and host for that and also another project that we did called just call me half about the hugh hafner but i did a lot of that stuff as well as a lot of educational uh drama dramas for a company called leaf wing uh, uh for professionals or actually they go leaf wing center but anyways we did a beautiful short film called inside autism and if you're interested in a lovely dramatic short um about aut a boy with autism it's it turned out just lovely and uh, you can look it up on youtube on my youtube channel it's also on vimeo but um yeah so there, there's so many things that i've done over the years that you know i i enjoy doing it and I kind of have this life slogan that, you know, we need to uh, be limitless in, in our desires and the things that we want and be as fearless as possible because, you know, different things that you try to attempt to do is frightening. It can be scary, you know? And I think back on my early days as a singer, when I first started singing, I was good, but I wasn't a hundred percent great. And, it just takes effort and work and t and you just have to keep believing yourself. You have to practice and you have to work really hard. You can't just be like, I'm going to be this and you can't work on it. I mean, you have to, you have to work for it, but you have to uh, give it a go. And then eventually I became a pretty darn strong singer and um, you know, it goes from there. And then as far as acting the same thing and the same thing with anything that I, try to do a pursue pursue i feel like i'm not answering questions is there any other questions that we need I'm to ask? also uh looking up to this and uh, whenever i see some interesting ones for sure i will share with you yeah, uh, mostly yeah. people said hi to you and send love from different countries as i oh, can see so nice i really oh look at somebody's asking me about crawl space bear deception <laughs> bear deception love you and crawl space and bear deception thank you Yes, yes, oh, yes. I didn't catch that one. You're also professional with finding the comments, <laughs> I can see. Yeah, I, 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 I do wear glasses, but I can see pretty well. <laughs> I just wear them for fine print. But, um, uh, I just no, saw that um, I have delay, I think, to receive okay. some comments. Love all the way from Woodland Hills. I live over there. I live close by. I live in the Gura area. So um, what was I going to tell you? Um, yeah, you know, it's really funny. Uh, can I share with you a little bit about um, success and fearlessness because it of course, kind of, of course. Uh, that would be lovely. Um, you know, it's like your, 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 your career or people's career can go down a certain path and you get really comfortable in that path, whatever it is. When I was younger, um, acting and doing very sexy roles and Oh, scorned. I love the movie scorn. Thank you for saying that. Somebody says suspicious sponge says the movie scorn that's actually the movie uh is called the woman scorn too i actually i played the second one the first one was um starred shannon tweed anyways to make a very long story short at that point i was being brave because in that era if you guys remember uh sharon stone she came out with um basic instinct and that whole thing of being very sexy and it's okay and all that and a certain amount of like, nudity was considered the norm and no big deal 
but you still have to be kind of brave. Um, and there were some films that I did that I really couldn't stand that I just, I was like, why am I doing this? It's just, this is just nudity to be nudity and I don't really like it. And other movies that I felt that I had a good character and you know, the fact that she was sexy was just who she was. Well, that I felt comfortable with and that's what I like to do. So re, uh, fast forward to where I am right now. Um, you know, being uh, okay with myself to be attractive and sexy. I'm not gonna say how old I am because it doesn't really matter, but you could look it up if you want to. Um, <laughs> is harder emotionally. Does that make sense to you? It's like, you guys are guys out there. You know, the guys, women will really understand this, I think, better than men, but feeling okay about being pretty and sexy at an older age is challenging emotionally, not just physically. Yeah, sure, physically, you have to try to look good. You have to be, you, you have to get fit. You have to do that. But to be okay with yourself being pretty, believe it or not, that's not easy. And um, you feel kind of like, oh, I'm not so this is like, I'm a horse trainer. I'm a producer. Right? And so I posted this picture, you know, this morning, kind of thinking of you. Because you said, I'm back. I'm back, right? Well, the exec again, the executive producer, Jim Wynorski, sends me sent the picture and I went, hey, I like it. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm going to share it. And then I went, literally, I'm telling you the truth. Before I was going to click share, I was like, oh, sexy? <gasps> I'm like, oh. and I'm like, Slut. And I thought about it and I go, no, it's, it's, I'm not even wearing a bathing suit. <laughs> I mean, it's just me, you know? And I thought, that's dumb. So that's what made me think about what I'm saying now is that it's okay. Oh, it's somebody of suspicious sponge is asking me. Yeah, what actually there are some questions. Uh, one uh, person oh, said, okay. Oh, I can yeah. totally answer that one about, oh, I can also answer about About this con too, right? Uh, what was it? Uh, was it your favorite scene from a scone too? A woman's corn too. Uh, and then I can also answer the other one about uh, films that I regret. Um, uh, woman's corn too, my, okay, this is kind of weird. But um, I had two favorite scenes. God, I wish I... The scene where I'm with the... Um, God, I'm terrible right now. I can't think of his name as an actor, but he was fabulous. He, um, he played the therapist. You got the person that seen a, a woman scorn might recognize what I'm talking about. And it's where I kill him. <laughs> 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 it's my, one of my favorite scenes. It's when I have a breakdown. He puts me under hypnosis. And in that hypnosis session, I realized who I actually am. I, I had a relationship in the past and it turns out I'm a murderer. I'm not just, I'm not this nice little sweet wifey poo that I'm trying to portray myself as, but I'm actually a really person. And when I snap and realize that's who I am, well, I'm going to have to kill him. <laughs> no, but I- <laughs> So I many Terminator fans also joining oh, the live show. <laughs> I, I, um, we're gonna have to make this a longer Instagram session. Um, so, so I love that scene, and I also loved a couple other scenes on Women's Farm too. I think I could go on forever. But earlier, someone asked me, and I forgot. Uh, yeah, uh, Bear Deception. Um, Bear Deception, I liked. Um, somebody asked me uh, some of the movies that Whether I, you regret. I okay. Then people are gonna look it up. There's a couple movies that I thought were just kind of stupid in their nudity. Um, it may not be the ones that you think of. Uh, I don't. I didn't mind playing a, a stripper in Go. I didn't mind playing any of those things. Movies that just the character had no depth, and I was just required to be naked. I hated that. It just yeah, wasn't because it was not about acting, just modeling. Right? No, and I. I didn't like it, and I felt that I was a better actress, and that I wanted to have an opportunity to share emotion and feelings and sure especially back then if we think back on that what was going on right now in that era late 90s or 2000 till 2000 i guess 10 i don't know um you know women was it was the thing you know <laughs> being and it still is but you know there was like a thing right then read you diaries i was on uh a couple series and i'm you know i don't know if anybody that's watching actually saw um uh, the Sherman Oaks series that I did on Showtime. Did anybody for see? four years, right? Yeah. Well, actually, I did it only. I forgot now. Two seasons. I can't remember. Oh, um, I see. Yeah, I played uh, the the mistress. I don't know, but I <laughs> love that. I thought that was great, and there was nudity in there, and I didn't care. 
that was great. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let me see what other questions. Am I missing something? Um, am I missing? I yeah, Matt missing. asked something. And also Terminator said about your beautiful eyes. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's my um, Polynesian. Um, oh yeah, the dude you stabbed in the back so many times. Lo, <laughs> as he's talking about a, a suspicious sponge is talking about um, a woman scorned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, uh, you mentioned about that, uh, about those ages that it was a thing. And actually I had an interview with uh, Deborah Twist. I don't know whether you know her, but no. she had almost the same path as you. That's why it's very interesting for me. And also she is producing these days. Yeah, you know, for me, it was like um, a couple of things happened that were why I kind of stepped back from doing movies. One, I had my daughter and she's, um, wow, it's making me feel really old. My daughter's 22. <laughs> she's beautiful. Um, You're so talking about Kyla, right? Uh, Kay Kayla. Yes. yes. Uh, and so I had my daughter and I still did keep acting because I did go. I did um, Legally Blonde. Um, so I was still working there for a little while and I had a really good agent. I was with the Jerry Zeitman agency for a while. And my career started to kind of really go, but because of my daughter, I wanted to spend more time with her. And, um, you, you know, it's just, it's, it's life, you know, and now she's grown up and I'm like, okay, I can, I can act again. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, uh, I don't know. Let me see Last I, time I heard in uh, Tracy Lynn Cowan uh, interview. Oh yeah. And yes, that uh, uh, Kayla was uh, going to uh, film, film school. So That's is it uh, still now, going on? My daughter is now works for, I won't say all the details, but she works for a television uh, company in, in Denver. She's a, a assistant editor and a, she's also working on producing her own things. She decided to do go right to behind the scenes as opposed to being, she did do some acting and she did some modeling and she's beautiful. But um, I think maybe because when she was younger, um, I was working and doing a lot of production and I'm a professional editor actually too. So um, she would come, this is my actual studio actually where I do at my home, I do a lot of home editing here. Um, and uh, she would come home from school or, or I'd go get her or whatever and I'd have to finish an editing job, poor thing. And I'd grab her, I'd sit her down on the couch over there and I'd make her watch the screen over here. And I'd say, I'd say, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And she'd be like, oh God, mom. <laughs> but unbeknownst to me, she actually really, uh, I guess, enjoyed it. So she decided she wanted to produce as well. So. Yeah, time passes so fast. Uh, since the last interview, I'm checking that things really changed so far. So now she's uh, about to produce something. Yes, she's been. She's actually produced a couple things already for because she's already graduated college. So she's a, she's got a double degree. She has um, a degree in cinema studies and also uh, journalism. Wow, that's cool. And uh, we know about your father's influence on you, and you mention it time to time on your page. Uh, but what about his influence on Kayla? Well, okay, so sadly, my father died um, before she was born, but there's still obvious influence just because of my father's legacy. That's why it's interesting. Yeah, she, she, um, I really think because our family is a film industry family. And I, when she was younger, she actually visited sets with me before, uh, you know, she'd visit me when I was directing. I think she actually may or may not have come to set when I was acting, I'm not sure. But we've also visited other directors, friends of mine sets and things like that. And there's, there, there is some, a little bit of, which is lovely, of kind of a s small Hollywood royalty kind of a feeling. And I, I, mean, I say that extremely humbly. What I mean is when you kind of grew up in the industry, people, you know, you have friends and family friends from that go way, 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 way back. And they're willing to kind of, you know, help you or guide you and, and mentor you in, in ways. So there, there's benefit to that. And even though my dad is not really well known anymore because he died, passed away a long time ago, you know, it, it we do try, you know, I mean, I, I try to stay in contact with some of my dad's old friends, you know. Yeah, um, because I almost had the same experience because my grandfather was a mathematician and oh. now I'm a mathematician. But the thing oh. was that he died uh, when I was 13 years old. That's why it's very interesting that how they can influence us, even we didn't spend that much time with them uh, in my adulthood. For example, your uh, Kayla didn't spend time with your father, but still we can't see the influence, you see? Yes, yes, yes. 
Would you guys mind one second? I swear it, I will go off camera for less than 30 seconds. My dog is barking for me. And of course, have... I'm getting questions now for you. So don't go away, for... just you get to the questions. I'll be right back. Sure, of course. Marina Priviet. I will have also interview with uh, Marina, uh, most probably about next week. Uh, someday I will give you 100 roses. So that was sweet, Terminator. I'm sure you were talking to Tani about it, not me. Nobody gives roses to me. <laughs> oh, here's your deck. Yes. So cute. She's very cute. Sometimes when I do these live events, people ask about this giant thing that she's got on her neck. I was going to say it before anybody asks. They're like, is that a shock collar? I'm like, no. It's a <laughs> we, um, I live up, up in the Hills area and stuff. And not that she's allowed out of the fence, but it helps to protect her in case she does. Cause she, she likes me. That's cool. What's her name? Her, her name is Kai. She's a rescue. Um, I got her from Life Animal Rescue here in California. And um, believe it or not, uh, as a puppy or well, not quite a puppy, like six months old, she was rescued by Life Animal Rescue from the uh, Korean dog meat market. Oh, I see. Yeah. I actually did a cute little short film um, called Hungry Dog. Uh, it's not about specifically that story. It's about a dog that's lost on the streets of Los Angeles. And she little puppy gets rescued. And um, I produced it to benefit Life Animal Rescue. And I know they got a lot of donations. I see. Uh, and by the way, Tani, I know you from Legally Blonde movie. Yes. And it was such a, a such an interesting movie because usually I watch comedy movies and that's how I got introduced to you. So what was your experience in that movie? And I know recently you had an uh, you had a reunion. Yes, we had a little bit of a reunion um, with some of the cast members and um, it was fun. I had a small part, you know, if you've seen Legally Blonde, I had a small. Um, um, I'll talk about your recent photo that it was lovely. I get to pretend you need to stop talking shit. What is she talking about? Somebody said, sometimes people don't understand what I was trying to say. Um, so, uh, oh, what was I trying to say? Okay, Legally Blonde. It was really, really fun. I, um, I, I really enjoyed it. It was originally a bigger role, to be honest. It was like, um, the, 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 the original script was a little bit more like uh, American Pie. So it was a little bit on this more scandalous side. And um, I, uh, some, of the, some of the lines that I got, that got cut out, but it was fun. Reese is really wonderful. She takes her work very, very seriously. Um, you know, uh, she tries very hard to be the best that she can be. And it was an honor to work, to work with her. Yeah, it was such a uh, such an interesting one. And what about your reunion? What happened there? Nothing. We just chatted about Legally Blonde, and and that was it. Just little stories about the making of, and you know, working with Reese, and you know, that's it. So nothing too exciting. Nothing too exciting. What other questions? Mm -hmm. there? But uh, I uh, got excited when I saw that, that uh, you're having that reunion and that picture that you shared with us. It was very interesting because after so many years, we could see all of you together. Aww. So did you share the video somewhere that uh, everyone uh, can watch it? Um, it is, uh, you have to go to Wizard World. I think it's called wizardworld.com. And or there's also, if you, it's on Facebook. If, if you go to my Facebook page, um, which is generally public, unless I, you know, put some things privately, um, you can see a link on my Facebook page if you go to there. But, or, oh, great. Or, or I'll try to post a link to, um, I don't know how to post, I guess I could. You, there, if you look on my Instagram, there's prob there is probably a link to Wizard um, World. On, on yes, yes, I observed the link. Uh, you're right. Uh, so everyone uh, who asked about that uh, reunion, you can check it out there. This, so this. Suspicious Spines uh, mentioned something for you, but that he edited the last comment. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, those, uh, uh, oops, sorry. I meant like she plays these dead victims roles in crime shows. Well, so, uh, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I played killer a bunch, actually. I played a, a, a killer a whole bunch. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I've, I've killed a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> How did this feel? It feels more than Terminator. <laughs> yeah, no, it's fun, you know? It's, it's part of what makes it fun. It's all make-believe. It's just, you know, it's kind of nice to uh, 
have the opportunity to play different people. When I was younger, I was going to take acting classes a lot. Um, and I was working some, I'm thinking in my early 20s, uh, I was when I was singing, and then I was sort of starting to become an actress. I laugh because I used to think to myself that the singing, I'm sorry, the acting lessons was almost like therapy. Because you get to be somebody else, you get to emote somebody else. And, um, you know, can can be very, you know, cleansing. <laughs> and tell us about your experiences as a singer that time in your early 20s. How was it to perform uh, on stages? It was really nice. I, um, I had a really lovely opportunity to perform and go on tour with some really uh, great people. I toured with, <laughs> for all the people that are going to be like, wait, who? Um, uh, Grace Slick, uh, Jefferson Starship, and let's see. I opened for Linda Ronstadt in Germany. See, this is really making me feel old. Um, Greg Kinn. Uh, I don't know. I, I opened the largest concert arena that I can think of that I performed at was the Cow Palace in San Francisco. So, But mostly they were in the U.S., right? No, I performed in, uh, live in Germany and Japan. Oh, yeah. Did I go to Spain? I can't remember. Gosh, it's a blur. Um, and yeah, so I went all, all over the world for, for a while. And, um, but a lot in the United States. And then I toured with... My first album was with RCA Records. And then I also had a smaller album uh, with WTG CBS Records with a group called Double Take. It was myself and another girl. It was kind of like a dance rock, kind of a dance really, album. We toured the United States. And that was, um, that was a lot of fun. And, you know, being... Uh, performing live, what I think is so intriguing is that, you know, y your heart is racing, you know, and you, uh, you look out and if you're performing in a big concert hall, you honestly can't, you only see the first 10 rows maybe. And then after that, it's a blur because the lights hit you and you can't see anything. So you have to kind of be in your own world. And singing is really a physical thing. It really is. You have to be physically fit to perform well, you, you know, your breath. And you, if you just really get into it, it's just, it's amazing. I really enjoy it. And also I noticed that those who are singer and at the same time actress or actor, uh, they perform wonderfully on stage and it affects on it. So do you agree? Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. Say that. Say that. Those uh, who do singing and acting at the same time, they are good performers also on stage as a singer. Do you oh, agree yeah. with that? Uh, well, I'll show you something. Hold on. Ah, sorry. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Don't tell. No. Okay. I admit it. Look at. I got a ring light. Can you see the ring light? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let me see. How am I gonna make it so you can see what the ring light? Oh, here we go. Um, that's. Can you see that? That's me. Wow. And my daughter is. Wait, wait, with the wing, ring light. Ugh, where I can't see. I'm trying to, there, that's my daughter. See her? Yeah. This was, um, gosh, how long ago? No, I had, if you saw in that picture earlier, I was wearing a dark wig. That was a musical, a live musical that we did called Mermaids, and it was with um, M MGM uh, Musical. And we performed in California, and it ran for not that long, a few weeks here in California. Um, and I played the role mermaids, not like mermaids, the fish, but mermaids as in the movie starring Cher and Winona Ryder. They turned it into um, MGM Broadway, actually. They turned it into a, a, a musical. So I got to sing songs like that Cher would do. And uh, my daughter played like a little part in it. We had so much fun. So that was, oh, that was cool. And a little bit. You had also received the rank of eight in IMDb before. And yeah. How, how did it feel? Because it's such an achievement, I think. Yeah. Some people don't take it seriously, but this is such an uh, achievement, I think. No, I mean, yeah, I had found out that uh, at one point I was eight. And I think I, my first thought, and you actually can look it up or I can um, if you're on IMDb Pro, when you were at your highest ranking on IMDb, and I was assuming that it was when Legally Blonde was released, but I believe it wasn't. It was actually before that. And I have to look it up. I may be wrong. Cruel but... Deception, if I'm not mistaken. What is it? It was Cruel Deception, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Something like that. It was one of those movies. And I was like, oh, so it's <laughs> not good. Yeah. But... I didn't also expect it was for that movie. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's just interesting, I guess. And how they, they, from what I understand, rate you on, on IMDb is just depending on how many people are looking you up and searching. So all, all my fans that are being 
friends of mine, click on IMDb a ton right now. Just do it over and over. <laughs> <laughs> It might help me direct this movie I want to direct. <laughs> you know, my best one was uh, 83,000. So, so far away. <laughs> because, you know, I'm not professionally doing this. This is just my hobby. And I because of... I looked you up, by the way. I stalked you. I looked you up on IMDb. And I saw yeah. it. But for you that you put that stuff on your IMDb, that you have to, that builds your, you know, you've got this show. You've got your Instagram show. That That's really good. Yeah, and... Uh, at the beginning of COVID, uh, actually, uh, many uh, filming were shutting down. And because of that, people were checking me out and I went up in the ranking. See? <laughs> now I'm about 1 million, something like that. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. I think I'm like 16,000 now compared to, to where I was. But it depends on what's you know, happening. Uh, you know, it doesn't, you know, hey doesn't matter it's like we're having a good time right that you know we all shouldn't take ourselves overly seriously you know um exactly it should be something fun just to see who is hot now and check out the movies for example you're right <laughs> uh i'm looking at suspicious sponge you're being very sweet and saying nice things um you said something about she plays a dead victim your suspicious sponge your mother that's interesting yeah no no i've been i've been killed i've been killed i played i've been dead um, bunches of times in movies, yeah. <laughs> but really happened, I guess. You uh, usually uh, killed, usually oh, well, killed. Really I was, happened. I was. You know, <laughs> my character was killed off in movies. I've died a bunch of crazy deaths in movies. I've been <laughs> shot. I have been uh, hit on the head with a telephone. <laughs> no, uh, I can't remember if I, that's how I died in that movie. I'm talking about. Um, Movie. Is it third deception? Is that how I died? I don't remember. Now, this is really embarrassing. I've done so many movies, uh, a lot of them B movies, and they, you know, they're shot like two to three weeks each, you know, and, and a lot of them like blur together. And I'm like, and one of the movies I was hit over the head, I played a killer, and I come in to kill the main actress. I'm one of the, I'm the lead, but you know, you don't know I'm the killer. And in this fight scene that I grab her and I'm trying to hold her down, I'm trying to strangle her, and she's supposed to reach behind her. Is it fair deception? And she reaches behind her and she's supposed to grab a telephone, you know, like one of those like older, regular old phones. Like, and on the set, it was um, like a black older dial up phone. And it wasn't, it wasn't a prop, it was real, right? So she's supposed to pick it up and she's supposed to swing it and hit me in the head. Well, I'm wearing this like black, black ski mask thing because I'm like this killer. They think it's a guy, the killer's a guy. So she swings, and she wasn't really a fight a, a fight actress. I've like done a lot of fighting. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, and so she swung too close to the story, and the, and the phone went gong. <laughs> <laughs> and you know those old phones. And this is really aging me. They have a bell inside because when they ring, they go right. They're not not so. It literally in the set, you can hear it going. It went gong. <laughs> And I went, ah, like that. And they went, like, this for real? And the director, okay. Abington, went, oh, it was Target of Seduction on the movie I'm talking about. And, um, and he, he, he's like, God! <laughs> I'm like, what? And they thought, uh, anyways, they didn't end up using that, that hit in the movie, how they cut around it and stuff like that. But regarding um, action movies, um, I was, I had trained to, like, kind of like a fakey red belt fakey some black belt movements, you know? And I was working at, um, a lot as an actress doing stunts and things like that with martial art. And I had worked with a lot of different um, trainers over the years. And then for a while I decided, you know what? I'm gonna learn for real, I'm gonna learn for real. And I started working with this karate guy here and actually Agura Lacombe Karate, he's like a seventh degree black belt. And he would train me privately because I wanted to learn how to be kind of a real fighter, not just a pretend fighter. And he used to laugh because we talk about the fact that since I've done so many action movies, that I was trained to miss. <laughs> like, swish. <laughs> swish. And, and there's an actual difference in the art of how you... I'm uh, really happy you didn't really kill someone. No, I didn't really kill someone. <laughs> but 
the years that I've, you know, so serious. <laughs> you know, like a lot of times when you're practicing your movements, a lot of times you'll hold your ground and you do a spinning crescent kick and you're going to come up and over. So the camera looks like, you know, you're striking, but you're like, you know, you're like this far away. You better be. Um, but I did a movie uh, with called Tequila Express and the stunt coordinator and actor that was in it named Mark Bro. He's also a producer director himself now is quite good. Um, we had all of our fight scenes together. And <laughs> you guys have a minute for a funny story. I'll tell you about that. Um, sure, of course. So we're doing this. You guys can, uh, on, if you go to YouTube, uh, for my YouTube channel, there's this, uh, uh, actually, you know what? I don't know if I can share a link later. There, the fight scene is on there. It's a Tequila Express fight scene. It's so funny. Um, well, it's not funny. It's good, but it's funny because... So I do a spinning crescent kick, I believe, and or um, and he goes flying. He's an amazing stunt guy, so he does like a flip backwards, which I wouldn't be able to do. He lands on his back, right? And we're in the middle of the desert. And I'm supposed to get up and give him a, whoo, like a stomp right into his gut, right? And I kept underdoing it. So the DP and the kept saying, and the director kept saying, it doesn't look like a real impact, you know? It, it, you know, I can tell that you're catching and you're like this far off is gut, right? And I'm like, oh, dang, you know? And Mark Grove says, okay, I want you to just go ahead and, you know, hit me. Yes, Tequila Express. Go ahead and, you know, give me a whoo with, you know, with your foot. And I went and I acted it all out. It's like spinning crescent kicks and come back and I go whoo like that. But this time, unbeknownst to me, was the little cacti thing stuck to the bottom of my foot, a boot, true story. And they went cut, and then there he is, Mark Grove on the ground, he's going, oh, <laughs> like that. And I'm going, oh my God, Mark. And I'm thinking, I swear I didn't stomp him really hard. I gave him just a contact, you know? And he's like, oh, and I look down, and I go, true story. Mark Grove, I will tell you, there's a, like, what, I guess they're like jumping cactus thingies, or I don't know, it was like a palm thingy, like this big. <laughs> literally stuck in his stomach it, I wow. stuck. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my story there but it happened to be a good scene i think for the it movie at, at least <laughs> <laughs> it was a great scene i i i uh we had fun we had a lot of fun doing it and we to this day we still sort of talk about it you know uh <clears throat> it was really it was fun the I don't know. The movie was starring myself, Christopher Atkins. Um, you know, it was a B movie. You know, it was. It, it, there were some good scenes, and I can tell you some good scenes. But I don't know how well that film did distribution wise. But it was really fun. You could probably. And you were it. also in Days of Our Lives, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I was recurring for a few episodes only. Shocker! 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 I played a sultry, dangerous stripper. <laughs> 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 So nobody expect that. <laughs> um, uh, uh, yeah, so I did that for a little while. I kind of actually wanted to, like, I was hoping that I could be a regular on the soap. This, is, this was after my daughter was born that I did Days of Our Lives. But, and I was actually trying to get on that, but I think, to be totally brutally honest, because of my career was kind of pegged as, like, the sexy you know, sometimes naked B-movie actress. I, I, I don't, I, that's I think partly why they didn't keep me on, on the soap opera, which is just, you know, kind of a bummer, but, um, you know, because it's just acting. And speaking of which, ironically, and I don't have anything against it. I've never been an actual real stripper and I've never, um, sometimes people ask me this and I like, some, like to share, I've never, ever, ever, ever done porn. Um, so there's never, ever been any real sex scenes in anything that I've ever done. It may look like it, but it never was. <laughs> so you were a good actor that's what I was just an actress and, all of <laughs> and you know I'm trying to think there was a movie that I did uh, I can tell you something ironic um, in the B movies where there's new scenes and there's like simulated sex scenes all that kind of stuff yeah they might look very racy but they're not as racy as you think at least the ones that I've been in you know there's always a cover you're not really connected I'm, t I'm sure I'm sharing way too much information but it's not what you think. It's it's just like when you pretend to kill somebody, it looks like you really killed somebody. I, I tell people, I said, I, I I murdered a lot of people on film, but not for real. And I've never actually had sex either on film, you know? Um, but I, I, you know, for, to each his own, what everybody else wants to do, but that's, you know, the, the truth behind that. I never really um, hurt anybody in my martial arts, except for that one time. <laughs> Is it fine now? Oh yeah, you tell me fine. <laughs> good, good to know. You and is it true that, 
Yes. Uh, people that came out on on Instagram. He he's, he produces and directs a lot of fun action movies, uh, like really great. So, and people also agreeing that you are such a great actress. Oh, so I really. Lucia Sponge also mentioned that. And uh, by the way, is it true that sometimes when you play a role, then your whole uh, I mean, artistic life can be uh, affected by that. Like, for example, they keep suggesting you the same role or similar one. Yes, it can cause problems. And for me, it's really strange. Um, how I started to get kind of popular, I'm going to give Andrew Stevens credit for that. Um, I had been acting and picking up a few roles. I did crawl space. I did things like that. Um, but he had kind of set out a word on the wire. Um, that to he was looking for then his next Shannon Tweet. Not that Shannon Tweet was wasn't working, but she was doing a little bit less. And um, he had all these movies that he wanted to do. And I literally at the time I went. I can do it. <laughs> and so, it's okay. We can't hear you. It's okay. So and um, I auditioned for I think the first one was a woman's going I think or was it one before that I can't remember. I can't remember the order, but yeah. So then I got that. So I did a bunch of those type of midnight teas too, a woman scorned. Um, so I was started playing all those roles and then I started getting more popular and getting um, those type of roles regularly. Um, but yeah, it does pigeon you, pull you, but that so does anything else that we do as actors or, um, you know, you are what people perceive you to be, you know? Um, and that's why I think it's kind of hard right now, going back to what I said if, long in the beginning of our interview, um, that now that I'm, uh, my, my, my daughter's an adult, but she's also a producer and I'm an, uh, a producer and a director and I produce some very serious content, you know, for the autism world and things like that. And that now I'm also a professional horse trainer and I have very conservative people that I work with that I got hesitant sometimes to like post something like, uh, of me as an actress. And, you know, it's kind of a shame because, you know, we should be proud of all the different things that we are and feel that it's okay to be limitless within reason. I'm always saying, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to do the type of movies I did when I was younger, but a uh, fun action movie. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I specifically asked you that because I felt that happened to you. They uh, offered you so many similar roles, but I'm very happy that you found your way, especially about producing and directing, because it shows that that's your thing also. Yeah, actually, to be honest, um, I kind of had to. That's, you're getting onto a subject of the reason, one of the, probably the main reason why I had to step back from the acting world is that all of a sudden, the only roles I were, get, were getting repeated offers for were sexier, sexier, raunchier, raunchier, less plot or orientated. And I just went, wow, because the industry kind of did that for a little while. It was like, like you know, like basic instinct, uh, fatal attraction, um, you know, ooh, get a Red Shoe Diaries. And then it's like, you know, burnout, you know. Um, I was fortunate to have worked with Don the Dragon Wilson on an action film. That was really great. And I wish I had done more of those type of movies, uh, actually. And I did actually quite a bit, but I wish I did more, so. And but Tony, uh, usually we try to keep the interviews short because uh, for Instagram, usually after yeah. one hour, it just uh, closes it. So before okay. we leave, I wanted to do something fun, if you agree. Uh, we have a challenge on our page named Crazy Eyebrow. We try to pull one eyebrow up, one down. Can you do that? I've always been able wait, hold on. I can do this one. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I can't do the other one. I've never. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I can't do it, wait. No, no, this one will only go up to like, I've always <laughs> Wait, no, that's cheating, just putting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can raise my eyebrows. What does that say? I need more. Oh, bubble. you see, after practice, <laughs> it's getting better. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, have you ever been in Cyprus before? Cyprus is so far away from the US. No, I don't think I have. No, 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 I have not. I don't think I have. Uh, would you <laughs> like... cons consider, for example, to attend any uh, movie festival in Cyprus if it happens, uh, in, if it, it will happen in the future? Well, sure. If I... That would be so great. Possibly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be so great to also uh, see you here in person in one of the movie festivals. Okay. And uh, Tony, would you like to add something? No, I, well, yeah, 
I just want to say I seriously appreciate um, people that are interested in my career at all. And I want you to know if you knew me in person, I'm actually, uh, you know, I have my own insecurities and I'm humble and I'm not, uh, I'm just like anybody else. And, and, and growing up with my father, actor Doug McClure, I can tell you that he also was humble and sweet and kind and tried to be the best person that he can be. And we try, we're imperfect, but we try. So just regular people. So <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, absolutely true. And you played so many roles. You have done so many things. You are such a, a humble person. I really admire your personality. You're great, Tani. Well, thank you. And I really do appreciate you even asking me to do your, your show with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot for joining me today. And thanks a lot to everyone who joined us too in the live show. I will post the video very soon so that everyone can watch it later as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tani. See you. Bye-bye.